Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Brexit Bite on importing food of animal origin. My name is Carol Heavey from the Brexit team in the Food Safety Authority of Ireland. I'll shortly hand you over to colleagues from the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, John Higgins and Noreen Galvin. John will give you a summary of the import controls on foods of animal origin, including what needs to be done now to prepare and what documents are needed. Noreen will give you advice on how your imports can have a more efficient transfer through the Board Control Post. Today's event will last 45 minutes in total, 35 minutes of content and 10 minutes for questions. If you have any questions from the presentations, just put them into the question box on your screen and we will get to as many as we can at the end. The webinar session will be recorded and available on the FSCI website. There are handouts available in the handout section of John and Noreen's presentations. So if you want to download them, you can download them during the presentation. If you're on social media, do let us know you are here using the hashtag FSAI events. Now I'll pass you over to John. Thank you, John. Thanks, Carol. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. My name is John Higgins. Um, and I work in the Border Control Post Policy Division of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, I'll give you a brief overview into what is required to import products of animal origin uh, from the UK after the end of the transition period on the 1st of January. Uh, my co colleague Noreen Galvin will present after me on the veterinary checks in a Border Control Post. Uh, you can enter any questions you may have in the questions pane in the control panel. Uh, we will get to as many as we can after the presentation. I'll turn off my camera now for the, for the presentation. I will describe how you can prepare to import animal products into Ireland from the UK, what documents you will need, such as veterinary health certificates, a brief description of comps of products, the current situation regarding the UK land bridge, what documents you will need to submit to the border control post, and how you can do this. These requirements are going to apply to the UK from the 1st of January, regardless of whether there is a EU-UK trade agreement. Products of animal origin, unless otherwise exempt, must undergo veterinary checks. These veterinary checks must be performed in a border control post. DCPs are currently located in Dublin Port, Dublin Airport and Shannon Airport. Uh, Ross Lear will be designated as a BCP at a later stage. These controls are necessary to ensure that imported animal products conform with animal health conditions in order to prevent the entry of exotic diseases such as foot and mouth disease and to conform with public health conditions in order to prevent the importation of food unsafe for human consumption. These controls are mandatory on animal products, alive animals at the entry point into the EU. The controls are harmonized in BCPs across the EU. That means that the same rules and standards are followed in all of the EU's BCPs. The veterinary controls consist of documentary, identity, and where required physical checks. Noreen will, will describe these checks in more detail in her presentation. And all of these checks are overseen by official veterinarians from the Department of Agriculture. Uh, for animal products to be permitted entry into the EU, must meet certain requirements. Product, products from the EU, UK must, uh, will also be expected to meet these requirements. They must come from an approved country listed in the relevant EU legislation. They must come from approved establishment and same will apply to establishments in the UK. The exporting country must have residue monitoring plan for that particular product category. Consignment must be accompanied by a veterinary certificate matching the EU model for that particular animal product. And this must be completed by the competent authority in the third country. The animal product, product must be appropriately packaged, labelled and transported. And this can be checked during the identity and physical checks in the BCP. A consignment must be presented to the BCP on arrival into the EU. A consignment would be considered non-compliant if it does not present to the BCP at this stage. The operator responsible for the consignment, as the name suggests, takes responsibility for the consignment on arrival into Ireland and makes declarations as the importer or on behalf of the importer. The operator is responsible for obtaining copies of the health certificate, cat certificates, in the case of fish, 
and other supporting documents. Uh, this person will be the first point of contact with VCP if there are any um, queries on a consignment. The operator is also responsible for fees that arise for, from the veterinary checks. To register as the operator responsible for the consignment, you need to visit the department's Brexit registration page or email the Brexit registration email address as found on this page. Uh, we are going to launch a poll now on this issue, so please enter your answer. The question, if you were importing food of animal origin from the UK after the 1st of January, who will be your operator responsible for the consignment? Answers be given are myself or someone else from my company, B, an, act, an agent acting on my behalf, C, haven't decided yet, or D, wasn't aware of this requirement. So you can keep answering the questions there and I'll just move on. Uh, further information on the registration process can be found by clicking on this link. Uh, the Department of Agriculture's website is moving over to a new website, uh, gov.ie, and this information will be found on the new page in future. The operator responsible for the consignment must create a common health entry document or shed P part one, and this must be done at least 24 hours before the consignment's arrival in the BCP. This serves as prior notification to BCP that this serves as prior notification to the BCP and is created in the Traces NT system. The minimum 24 hour period will allow the BCP to perform veterinary checks in advance of the consignment's arrival and any issues may be resolved in advance. Only one veterinary certificate is allowed per shed. And the results from the poll, 42% um, the operator responsible for the consignment will be myself or someone else from my company. 34% uh, will be an agent acting on, on my behalf. 21% haven't decided yet. And 3% weren't aware of this requirement. You can find detailed guides on how to create a shed uh, by following the link on the bottom of this page. These links will also be found on the new gov.ie website. So what needs to be checked in a border control post? Live animals need to be checked, such as horses and cattle. Animal products, such as food products containing products of animal origin. Compsa products, germinal products, that means semen, ova and embryos and animal byproducts such as pet food. Also hay and straw must be controlled in the BCP. And this is for animal health reasons in order to prevent the entry of exotic diseases such as foot and mouth disease. The combined nomenclature or CN code is a customs tariff code and is used for classifying goods. The specific list of what needs to be controlled is found in regulation 2019-2007 and the list for COMSA products is found in decision 2007-275. Products are categorized here by their combined nomenclature code. If you're unsure of your CN code for, your, for a particular product, you should contact the Revenue Classification Unit through the link or email address at the bottom of this page. Regulation 2019-2007 lists the products of animal origin requiring veterinary checks in a BCP. They are displayed like this. You can see the CN code on the left hand side of the page. A brief description of the product, such for 0202 is meat of bovine animals frozen. In the, on the column on the right, you can see further uh, qualifications stating what products do not require checks or products that do not come under that, that CN code. Uh, this is the first step of creating a common health entry document on Trace NT, and this is performed by the operator responsible for the consignment. Uh, this serves as prior notification of the BCP's arrival in the BC, uh, the consignment's arrival in the BCP. At this stage, uh, a CN code is selected, and this depends on the product being imported. Uh, multiple CN codes may be selected. Not all combinations are possible, as only one veterinary cert is allowed per shed. Any product listed on a shed must come under the same veterinary health cert. 
The information entered on a shed reflects the information on the health cert. To create a shed, several boxes must be completed. Just as a consigner, consignee details, entry point to the U, so it's coming in through Dublin Port, Dublin Port will be the entry point, as well as other information such as a seal and container number, uh, information on the product, such as weight, further information on CN numbers, and numbered packages, and the establishments of origin, as well as other information. Uh, the definitions for all these terms are found in the trace site NT guides previously mentioned. In general, animal products must come from approved establishments. There are certain ex exceptions. Uh, one of those is honey. Uh, these establishments are inspected and are approved by the relevant competent authority of the third country. Uh, these establishments must be on the relevant EU approved list at the time of certification. The approved EU list can be accessed by clicking on the link at the bottom of this page. For example, to find the list of establishments approved to export poultry, meat, CEU, you click on section two in the food section on the left-hand side of the page. Um, once you click on that, uh, you will be, a list of countries will be displayed. If you click into a country, you will display the list of approved establishments in that country. After the end of the transition period, the 1st of January, uh, the UK's list of approved establishments will also be available on this page. The veterinary cert uh, must be based on the relevant model as laid out in the EU legislation for that particular product. Uh, this is the most important document in the whole process. And on, on the veterinary certificate, uh, certain details must be completed, such as the place of loading, uh, which is the final place where the products are to be loaded onto the means of transport to the EU. So this means where a container is put onto a ship. Um, country of origin is where the finished goods were produced, manufactured, or packaged. And the place of dispatch is the last third country establishment of the export chain from which the final consignment is transported to the EU. The competent authority of the country of dispatch is responsible for certification. That means if the products are being dispatched from the UK, it's the UK authorities that are responsible for certification of those products. Uh, other important information indicated on a vet cert is a seal and container number. If a seal number is named on the health cert, a seal check alone may suffice for the identity check part of the veterinary checks. Otherwise, a more in-depth inspection of the product is required, and this happens at a different location in the port, and this may result in delay of a consignment leaving the BCP. The regional health cert must accompany the consignment to the BCP. It's important to note that certs must be issued before consignment leaves the control of the competent authority of the place of dispatch. This retrospectively signed certs are not uh, in general accepted by the BCP. On this issue, importers must consult with their suppliers. Official veterinarians and DEFRA to ensure that arrangements are in place to have the correct certs and that they are completed correctly. Uh, to give you an idea of the range of health certs, here's a list for fresh meat. You can see here that um, there are specific health certs depending on the species. The BOV cert is for meat from domestic bovine animals. Similarly, there are specific health certs for meat products, meat preparations, composite products, and other products of animal origin. Therefore, it's important to have the correct model cert for your uh, product of animal origin. Uh, further detailed information can be found on DAFM's import control website, which may be accessed by clicking on this link. Uh, we have information on each type of uh, product and margin with links to legislation, approved establishments, and model certs. Uh, this information will also be accessible uh, by using the search engine on the gov.ie website. Uh, Comps of products also require veterinary controls in a BCP. Uh, these are foodstuffs for human consumption, contain both processed products and margin and products of plant origin. But the plant origin cannot be present just to lend special characteristics, such as taste, texture, color. An example of this would be strawberry yogurt, uh, which is a dairy product, not a composite product. But the plant material can't be there just for technical reasons, such as required for the manufacture of the product. Uh, an example of this is a can of tuna with uh, sunflower oil. 
which is a fishery product and not a composite product. Example of a composite product uh, is a pizza with cheese and ham. Further detailed information on composite products can be found in the department's composite product uh, website. Uh, the FCI's e-learning module also, also has an interactive section on composite products, and I recommend you check that module out. Uh, the CN codes for composite products are listed in 2007, 275. Not all composite products require veterinary checks, but exempt products must meet the requirements of Article 6 of 2007, 625, 625 or be listed in Annex 2 of that decision. To be exempt from veterinary checks, uh, the product must, amongst other requirements, not contain meat, uh, it must be shelf stable, or the final product must have been cooked. In summary, composite products either require a health search identified under the CN code as being exempt from veterinary checks, such as those listed in Annex 2 of 2007 275, or meet the requirements for derogation, would require commercial documents as outlined on the link on the previous page presented to the, to the BCP. Uh, many importers will use the UK land bridge. This involves the transport of EU goods from one EU country to another by the UK. Uh, what described here is the current situation, but how the checks are performed is subject to change. Uh, the goods are transported across the UK under customs supervision. They must re-enter the EU through a BCP. A documentary check and pre-notification through Trace NT is currently required. Uh, where the documentary checks are satisfactory, no further action is required by DAFM. Certain goods require a seal for inter-community trade, uh, such as germinal products, and these will also require a seal when using the land bridge. Uh, customs will also have their own requirements for the land bridge. Noreen will go into these, the, the submission of documents in uh, more detail in her presentation. Uh, in summary, documents must be submitted to the BCP in advance of the consignment's arrival, such as the shed, copy of the health search, and other supporting documents. And this is done by the operator responsible for the consignment. In summary, uh, if you're the operator responsible for the consignment, you must register to use Trace NT and CCS through the Brexit registration email address on the top of this page. You must determine the CN code for the product. This is not only for veterinary checks purposes, but for customs purposes too. You must provide the correct veterinary health cert, and this must be completed correctly. Therefore, it's important to ensure that your suppliers and official veterinarians are prepared for this process. Uh, you must give 24 hours prior notification to the creation of a common health entry document or shed on Trace NT, and then you must present the consignment for inspection at the Border Control Post. For any further queries, please contact Brexit Call through this email address at the bottom of this page or through the phone number here, or if you wish, through the FSCI, and they will forward on the questions to us. I also recommend that uh, you access the FSCI's e-learning module on import controls. It gives a very interactive uh, guide to all of the import controls. It's very useful. Uh, thank you for your attention. My colleague, uh, Noreen Galvin, will explain in more detail about the veterinary checks that happen in the border control post. Uh, thank you, John. Okay, um, so I'm just going to um, follow on from what John said, um, maybe to talk about some of the practicalities of preparing for the import controls process and what you can do now um, in preparation for the various stages of it. Um, okay, so as John said, um, all live animals, products of animal origin, including fishery products, plant and plant products that come into the EU from third countries require import control checks at a border control post. And from the 1st of January, these import control checks will apply to goods coming from GB, regardless of whether there is an EU UK trade deal. The checks are mandatory and they're there to reduce the risk to human, animal and plant health. 
So what exactly is the import controls process? Um, we can roughly break it down into three steps, although the preparation for each is, is much more probably cumbersome or takes a lot more. But the first stage is a documentary check. And this is where we are looking at, as John mentioned, the most important uh, document that we need is a health certificate. For each consignment of product of animal origin that you wish to import into the EU, it must have a, an accompanying health certificate. Then once we have the documentary checks done, we proceed to an identity check. Again, for 100% of all consignments will require an identity check. And then a various percentage of those, depending on what the commodity is, uh, will have a physical, a physical check. And we'll talk more about that as we move on. So in preparation for the documentary check and for the health certificate and the certification of the products, the one thing you need to do now is to talk to your UK supplier or your supplier in GB. Let's call it GB for now. Um, and you need to ask them the question if they can meet the EU requirements regarding their establishment. So will they be approved or listed? And um, that list is not live yet. We can't see that because they are um, they're they are pending as such. So it's not on the EU website as yet, but they should know in advance whether they are going to be approved. So you need to ask them that question. Can, can they provide an official veterinarian? Will there be an OV available from DEFRA to certify the product products in the timeframe that you require? Um, and the next question to ask is, will there be an option of a competent authority seal to be placed on your load? Um, so we'll talk about the benefits of having a competent authority seal on your load when we talk about the identity check, uh, but this is just something to keep in mind now as we move forward to talk to talk about the next process. So the next stage in preparation, um, and you took a poll on this, and actually quite a lot of you are, are prepared, is the operator responsible for the consignment. This is a very important person in third country imports. Um, in the import controls process. They have the responsibility of amalgamating all the paperwork from the UK supplier. They have to submit it. They have to generate a common health entry document on Traces NT 24 hours in, ad in advance of the load arriving at the border control post. So in this case, Dublin or Rossley Airport. Um, they also have to submit the paperwork to, to DAFM. So um, we'll talk about that in the next slide. And the operator responsible for the consignment is our main contact point. So when we have all the documents in and we're doing our documentary check before the load probably even departs in GB, um, certainly before the load arrives at the border control post, the operator responsible for the consignment is our contact point for any queries we have relating to maybe clerical errors, on the documents, so clerical errors on the shed or on the health cert that can be rectified. Uh, there are small uh, errors on the health cert that maybe can be rectified, but the health cert, as we mentioned, is really important. It has to be correctly filled out. And um, if there are issues with the health cert, it would require us to go back to the competent authority in the UK regarding this, and this would cause delays. Um, so just to point out how important the operator responsible for the consignment is. When we're talking about submitting the document to DAFM, um, this is done again 24 hours in advance and it's done at the same time as the Common Health Entry document is generated on Traces NT. And John, there's links in John's talk um, to guide the, uh, re the operator responsible for the consignment as to how to generate the sheds on Traces. And then when they're submitting um, their documents to DAFM, there is an online imports portal um, in development at the minute, and it, it will be finalized in time for January. And once you're registered as an operator responsible for the consignment, DAFM can, will have your details and we will forward you the details of the portal um, in time. So onto the online portal, you will upload a copy of the health certificate. Um, a phyto certificate refers to the certificate that's required for plant and plant products, if, if that's what you're importing. A copy of the common health entry document for each consignment and then supporting documents for the entire load, let's say packing list, commercial invoices, and we'll also need the single administrative number as well from customs. 
the important thing to remember is that the original health certificate must travel with the load. So for animals and products of animal origin, germinal products, animal byproducts. So for this audience, I am, you know, products of animal origin, the original health certificate, the driver must pick this up from the place of loading and bring it with him and present it to the border control post when he's um, presenting the load for inspection. When we talk about a phyto certificate for plant and plant products, the original can be presented at the point of exam, but it's not necessary and um, it can be submitted afterwards within five days. So I think that goes to uh, DAFM in Back Weston. So on the documentary check, again, as we say, it's done on 100% of all consignments. Um, we started on the copies of the documents that we receive from the operator responsible for the consignment. And we're checking that the health cert is the correct model, that the correct attestations are, are, are um, crossed out in it or left included in it. Again, this is a, an official veterinarian um, will have filled this out in the UK prior to the load departing. We'll check that the details on the shed and the health certificate match. Uh, if you're bringing in fishery products, it needs SFPA verification, and um, there will be there is more information on their website sfpa.ie regarding fishery products. As I mentioned, all queries that we have when we're doing the documentary checks are directed to the operator responsible for the consignment. And once we have completed our documentary checks based on the copies of the paperwork, the consignment then is further assigned to an identity check or an ID and physical check. So by engaging with your UK supplier, by having your uh, operator responsible for the consignment, um, aware of their responsibilities, then hopefully you know you have you're well on the way to submitting successful documents and and uh, you know at least the documentary check will be compliant. Uh, you'll have the correct paperwork submitted in a timely fashion. So as we mentioned, once the documentary checks are done, then 100% of consignments of products of animal origin will have, for, will have a further inspection. It may be an identity check or just an identity and a physical check. When we talk about an identity check, it can be a seal check or a full identity check. Um, so if we talk about a seal check, this is done in Terminal 7 and um, it's done in a, in a drive-through boot. So it's quite an efficient identity check. Now, in order for this, for us to be able to do this, there needs to be a competent authority seal placed on the load at the time of loading and at the time of certification of the products by the official veterinarian in the UK. That seal number is included as the as, as part of the certification on each health cert that's included in that load that is sealed. Um, and we cross-reference the alphanumeric code on the, on the seal with the health certs that we've received. And then we know that the commodities that are certified on the health cert are what's included in that load. An important point to remember is that the seal must be intact. So ensure that it's not tampered with, that the driver doesn't open it or it's, you know, that it's it's not tampered with. So that's an, uh, an identity check if there's a competent authority seal placed on it by the official um, veterinarian or the competent authority in the in GB. The other identity check is a full identity check and this is required if there's no competent authority seal or at our discretion, even if there is a competent authority seal, but there's just there's just a discrepancy on the documents that might warrant further um, investigation. So in this scenario, the load is put onto the loading bay in T10, and it requires a, a partial turnout in order to identify and cross-reference each of the commodities that's on, on the load with the health certificates and the sheds that we have received, received for each consignment. The degree of turnout is proportional to the amount of consignments and the method of packing of, of that load. So we will have to have access to each, each consignment um, to cross-reference the establishment, the, the metrics, the establishments, the description of the commodity and to ensure it is what it is meant to be. Um, so then moving on to a physical check, 
the rate of physical check varies with the type of product being imported. Now, for most products of animal origin for human consumption, they'll either have a 15% or a 30% inspection rate. And what this means is essentially that um, if it's a 30% inspection rate, that 30% of all the consignments of, uh, let's say, raw poultry that are poultry meat that's going through the border control post in any one year would be subject to a physical inspection. Again, what we're doing here is we're doing a full identity check, as mentioned before, and we're checking other parameters to ensure that the consignment is fit for entry into the EU and is fit for human consum consumption. Again, the load has to be partially turned out. Each consignment has to be accessed and the degree of unloading will be proportional to the number and of consignments and the method of packing of that load. And just to mention that some consignments may be some subject to sampling. So we do, um, there is random sampling for uh, residues, antimicrobial residues for microbiological criteria, etc. cetera. Um, so if, you're, if your consignment is subject to sampling, it's at this stage, it would be sampled during the physical process. So then once we've done the documentary, the ID um, and the physical, if, if, if it was uh, selected for a physical, we make a decision on the consignment by completing the common health entry document on traces. So if it's acceptable, we, it's called validating the shed. We validate the shed, customs are informed and your consignment is free to leave the border control post. If for some reason, your consignment is rejected or it's refused entry into the EU, um, then we don't validate it um, and your any non-compliant consignments won't be allowed to enter the EU. Now, rejections can occur at any phase of the import controls process, but just if you notice in, in red on this slide, just an important point to remember is that the majority of rejections occur due to documentary errors. So it's vital to ensure that the documents that are documents that are submitted are correct that they're submitted in a timely fashion so if your consignment is rejected um, the options are to return it to the country of origin to destroy it or a treatment of the consignment in a manner specified by DAFM now that is probably applicable more to plant and plant health products but um, not exclusive to those any fees, uh, John mentioned that the operator responsible for the consignment is subject, you know, is it shall be held responsible for fees incurred at the border control post. And along with that, any storage fees or fees for destruction or returning to the country of origin would be met by the operator responsible for the consignment as well. And I suppose I would say in advance to have a plan in place to deal with a rejected consignment. So it's important to have, you know, to have a, a good working relationship with your operator responsible for the consignment, your haulier and yourself, the importer, the operator responsible for consignment and the haulier. Um, it's important that the that those three people have can talk to each other, have connectivity and have a plan in place. So just to sum up, um, in preparation for the practicalities of the process, Verify that your products can be certified in, in, in the UK for EU imports. So talk to, your, talk to your supplier in GB, ensure that their establishment will be listed, ensure that they have access to an official veterinarian to certify the products, um, clarify who is to be the operator responsible for the consignment. I can't emphasize how important that person is in, third con in the third country import process and assess your freight presentation in order to, we mentioned how the the turnout for the identity and the physical checks is proportional to the amount of consignments and the method of packing of the load. And we appreciate, you know, groupage, mixed load, re retail loads, you, you can't, we can't not have them, but just to appreciate that by their nature and complexity, they're, they are going to be slower to process. If you can have a confident authority seal on your load, that would on, on the trailer, that would be ideal. Now these loads, they can be single or multi-consignment loads. I suppose the, the problem is that they must originate from the same place of, of dispatch uh, for a competent authority seal to be placed. Um, but certainly just to assess your freight presentation and consider how it will affect the length of time an identity or a physical check would take. So just 
um, I suppose to say it's a bit of a whirlwind and sorry about that. Um, there's a lot of information in those two presentations, but please don't hesitate to contact us with any queries that you, you may have or equally if the person who is going to be your operator responsible for the consignment or your haulier has any queries, please ask them to get in contact with us as well. We would we would appreciate the opportunity to engage with you further and to um, clarify any issues you may have. Um, so that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks very much um, for listening. And there's been a great amount of, uh, of chat. So thanks, Noreen, and thanks, John. And um, lots of information there and lots of questions. So um, I think uh, if I start off with you, John, on, on one of the questions we got, which was, um, I occasionally import small amounts of food of animal origin from the UK. Will I have to follow the same rules for these? Uh, thanks, Carol. Um, thanks for your question. Um, yeah, the same rules apply no matter the volume or the weight of the product. If it's going to a commercial enterprise or it's for sale. Some different rules apply for personal consignments. Um, but generally the amounts are very small and meat and dairy are not included in those. But for commercial, it doesn't matter on the, the amount. That's perfect, John. Thank you very much. Um, Noreen, there's here one here that maybe you could help with. Um, please could you advise yep. what checks are completed on labels at the border control post? Are the checks completed on the outer case and primary packaging of the products inside the case? Is it expected to have the ID mark on the outer case? Um, Hi, thanks, Carl. Um, yes, so when, when we're doing an ID check, we are looking for the ID mark, the establishment mark, um, the country of origin on the outer on the outer case. Um, that's def that is part part of the identity check. Um, um, so yeah, we, we do we look for that. It, it is part of the identity check. That's perfect. Thank, thanks very much, Noreen. Now, there's a question here on food supplements, and there's a few questions on food supplements. And um, this one here is, are veterinary health certificates required in the case of food supplements of animal origin imported in finished form for distribution, i.e. fish supplements? I think maybe, John, if you could help with that one. Uh, depends on the exact product and what the ingredients are. Like some. Uh, food supplements may be composite products and they can be exempt but depends on the percentage of uh, the product and large in in the food supplement but if uh, say a fish capsule uh, that is nearly all fish oil in it that's counted as a fishery product that so needs a uh, veterinary health search and veterinary checks in the uh, border control post so it depends on the particular product and the percentage of products found margin in that product Perfect. And um, thanks very much, John. And um, there, there are some um, questions. I just sorry, uh, Nori. Um, in relation to um, the documents, and if if the, the there are different drivers bringing loads in, and um, so the the driver is not the same as the one who left with the load. And maybe this one for you, Nori. And um, how would the health certificate get sent with the load? Um. Okay, well, I suppose if if it is an accompanied load, I suppose at all times the dry, the dry, there are probably are other documents maybe for customs that they have to make sure that they that they maybe carry as well. But if it is an accompanied load, I think the driver that ends up at the border control post will have to ensure that he has the health cert that he got the the health cert from the from the previous driver if that's what's going to happen. Um, if it's an unaccompanied load, um, we are still exploring options about weatherproof capsules on the outside of the trailers or ziplocks on the outside of the trailers for the health certificate to be to be attached to um and i'm not sure if that's something that even um accompanied loads want to entertain but either which way the the original health cert would have to be presented at the border control post with the load that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Noreen. And um, um, maybe for you, John, one about um, registering with the Department of Agriculture. And so the question is, do importers of products of animal origin have to register with the Department of Agriculture or with the, with the Environmental Health Service? Yeah, 
if the importer is going to be the operator responsible for the consignment, they can register with the Department of Agriculture uh, the, through the Brexit registration email address. But that depends if, if they are going to be the operator responsible for consignment. Very good. So, and, and specifically food of animal origin, they need to register with the Department of Agriculture? If they're going to be the operator. Yeah. Perfect. That, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, just one maybe um, for you, Noreen, um, in relation to the, um, whether the rules will also apply to bringing meat from Northern Ireland to the Republic of Ireland, will the same import rules that you were, were uh, speaking about apply to that product as well? Um, currently, as we understand it with the Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, no, they can travel from north to south without um, import controls process. But um, if they're traveling from GB to Northern Ireland, they, as it stands, they are, um, there should be EU import controls processes at the point of entry in Northern Ireland. But um, that's as we understand it at the minute. But if you're bringing products from Northern Ireland that have originated in Northern Ireland to the south of Ireland, there isn't an import controls process to be undergone. That's perfect. Thanks a million, Noreen. And there's quite a lot of questions on composite products, John. So I hope you don't mind if I if I if I ask you a few. Um, the, the, and it's a lot of them are in relation to um, where if it's a composite product that has products of animal origin, do you need a composite product search as well as the product of animal origin search? So I, I'll just call out one of them here. And um, if a product is classed as a composite product, which includes um, products of animal origin and plant ingredients like a whey protein powder mixed with other ingredients. Um, then as we understand it, a composite um, um, health search is required. However, do we also have to apply for a dairy health search for the same product as the whey comes from dairy? If it's a composite product, it's a composite product health search that's needed, not the dairy search. Only a dairy product would need the, the dairy search. So in that case, but like whey protein in the composite products often be shelf stable and maybe derogated from veterinary checks, but it will be a composite product search in that case. And as another one, I hope you don't mind, John, if I if I get you on this one, is um they're just asking for clarification in relation to, to composite products. Um and that uh, um is that the comp the criteria for being a composite product is that it contains processed meat and is ambient sta stable um or heat treated. There's misinformation circulating that a composite product can only be ambient stable, which would be the end of prepared fresh multi-component food importation. So those people just want clarification on whether or not a composite product has to be ambient stable. A composite product can be, does not have to be ambient stable. It just still need a veterinary search if it's not ambient stable or hasn't been fully cooked. But in the case of meat, the composite product, that would need a veterinary search, no matter if it's uh, ambient stable or needs refrigeration. That's that's great. Thanks, uh, thanks a million, John. I'm just kind of looking through. There's an awful lot of um, uh, questions here, and there's some questions about the land bridge and and. Um, sorry, Noreen, but is that John as well? <laughs> We're going to, to, but there are people talking about if they're bringing product through um, the land bridge, maybe from France, um, what sort of documentation are you talking about when it comes to um, documentary checks um, in, in relation to the land bridge? Yeah. So what documents do they need? Uh, the procedure for the land bridge hasn't been fully worked out, still under discussion, but at the minute there's a, uh, Prior notification is needed through uh, Traces NT, and it's commercial documents that are needed, unless an interest trade search is required at the minute for movement of the product. But in general, food products don't require that search, so it's commercial documents that are needed. It's also done under custom supervision too, so that that requirement as well. That's perfect. Thanks a million, John. And here's one, maybe the final one, um, Noreen, so that we don't go over time. Um, how are loads handled that comprise both products of animal origin and non-animal origin? Example, cosmetics, supplements of animal origin and plant juice. Um, yeah, good question. Sorry, and I should have I should have probably alluded to that. So what we would do is we would 
um, if they are due for, if, if the product of animal origin um, or any of the other agencies, be it the HSE or Plant Health, if it needs a physical inspection and if it's a multi-agency physical inspection, that load will be brought to one site on the port and the physical inspection will be done for all of the components of that load in one site. So you won't be brought to uh, three different sites that are run by the HSE. HSE or plant health or veterinary checks. Um, so it would be done in, in one site. Um, that, that would be, that, that's our plan. That, that's perfect. And Noreen and John, thanks a million for all those questions. And we got um, plenty, plenty of other questions there. And apologies if we didn't get around to, to answering your questions. And just to say some of the questions um, that we received were on labelling. Um, so if, if, if any of you are looking for more information on labelling, our next Brexit bite on the 4th of November um, will include labelling and the requirements there. So that, that might be one uh, to look out for. So as I say, thanks a million, John and Noreen. Um, lots of information there for people to, to take on board. Um, if we didn't cover your question, um, John and Noreen both put up uh, the, the email address there for the Department of Agriculture. So it's brexitcall at agriculture.gov.ie for those questions in relation to the importation of um, animal origin. But just to say in general that a, a Q&A of the questions gener generated from um, this Brexit by series run by the FSAI will be made available on our website. Um, but a big thank you to everyone for joining us today and for participating in the polls and the questions. Um, as I say, the FSCI are holding another Brexit bite on the 4th of November with more helpful advice on importing food of non-animal origin and also uh, labeling your products. So to register for that, that Brexit bite, just go to uh, fsci.ie forward slash Brexit. And but just to say that we hold lots of uh, events throughout the year and uh, to make sure that you don't miss out on any of those, subscribe future events uh, just go into fsci.ie forward slash events and uh, you'll be notified of any events that we have coming up so we look forward to seeing you again in two weeks time hopefully you can join us again for that one and um, again thanks a million to, to Noreen and John for joining us today just to say before we finish and um, can I ask you just to take a few moments to complete the event survey it'll pop up um, straight after the webinar and I'll also be linked in the follow-up email um, and as a few people were asking about um, the PDFs of um, the um, presentations that Noreen and John have just given. The actual um, video of the, the presentations will be available on the FSCI website, but the PDFs will be available. So if you want uh, to get them, just to, to just click into them now and download them onto your, um, onto your laptop and uh, you'll have access to them then. Um, so I suppose that's all that's, really, all that's left to say is just goodbye. Many thanks again for joining us. And um, goodbye to, uh, or thanks for, uh, to Noreen and John for, for joining us today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.